Uh, now, I'm going to try something not illegal here. I'm parked over to the side of the road, but why do, would you like to have a little drive through? Uh, this might not work, and it might work. I'll have to drive carefully because my phone will close down, so it'll sort of fall down. Uh, you don't want my phone to fall down. Uh, I wonder how well that'll work. Just give me a second. Um, all right, we'll give that a try. Okay, I'll take you for a spin while I do part two. Hang on, better check that's still working. Yep, it's still working. I'm, I'm going to do part two of this. Um, two part, what is now a two part episode. I don't know how successful that's going to be. I've got my laptop propping that up, but let's go for a drive while we do part two. And, you know, if I get collected here as I join this freeway, <laughs> you will have live coverage. Um, but in part one, I was mentioning a tweet by Ben Stokes, the England cricketer. Uh, and I was on the verge of making a point about that. Uh, because I always like to just find an angle on stuff that I read about or hear about. Um, and, uh, and I was about to make a comment because what happened there was Ben Stokes uh, was training at that wonderful, great big new cricket stadium that exists in India. It's the one that Donald Trump attended um, for a big love-in with Narendra Modi a while back, about a year ago. And, uh, and once they had explained to Donald Trump uh, what cricket was, uh, he, uh, he then congratulated India on some of its great cricketers, like Sachin, <laughs> that's how he pronounced it, you know, Sachin, Sachin uh, Tendulkar, <laughs> and Virat Kohli. <laughs> he had no idea who these guys are, you know, they're much more impressive than him. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, but uh, England is playing at that ground at present and Ben Stokes was training and he tweeted to the world about what a wonderful stadium it is. So given we're speaking about cricket here, if you, um, there is a chance as I take this particular uh, overpass and freeway and all that sort of stuff that you'll spot the MCG. Uh, because that's um, the, the new cricket stadium in India has taken the crown away from the MCG as being the biggest, you know, cricket ground in the world. Uh, so we're second now. Now, um, in terms of you know the number of people you could shove in there, right? Now Ben Stokes, he was paying the he was paying the cricket ground compliment and it would have been amazing training there I'm um, just looking around at just the sheer size of the thing you know the, the MCG is wonderful too um, but to be in a place that's even bigger I'd like to go there I'd like to go to every cricket ground in the world if I could you know I'd like to go and see a, a test match at every cricket ground in the world that well that has ever played a test match. Well, you couldn't do that because some of them don't play. So, you know, test matches have in the past been played on plenty of grounds, I'm sure. Actually, I know a few. Um, that they don't get played on anymore. All right. Um, what's the cricket ground right up in the north of India where you can just see the mountains? You know, the, uh, the Himalayas. That's an amazing cricket ground. I like that one. I like when I'm watching the cricket from there, or I saw one game from there. Um, Wow, I'd love to be there just to see those mountains. We Australians who have never travelled, and that includes me, uh, 
we've never even seen a tall mountain in our lives. I've never seen a tall mountain in my life. Um, I've only seen, I've seen snow only a few times in my life. I reckon I've seen snow. We do get snow in Australia, of course. And I've been to the snow and I've been skiing. But, you know, it would only be about 10 or 20 times, probably 20 times that I've seen snow. But I've never seen a tall mountain. And I'll bet you it would be an amazing sight. Now, speaking of tall mountains, when coronavirus first hit, I remember on the BBC that um, they were reporting from BBC Kathmandu uh, and, they, and for the first time in a long time you could see the Himalayas from there, you could see Mount Everest from there um, because um, the pollution levels were down but anyway, Ben Stokes was paying that cricket ground, the big one I'm coming up to the MCG now. Look, you probably won't be able to spot it. I can spot it. Hang on, can I? Can I? Can I? I'll be able to see the light towers in a second. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to touch the phone because that's illegal. I've got the phone propped up on my front window. I'm not going to touch it to show you. Um, anyway, Ben Stokes made a comment, and keep your eye out there. Uh, what a wonderful cricket ground this is, and they've got local music on as well. Now the local music that was on happened to be an important national song of the Indians. Um, it's all, you know, that was very, very relevant when India was achieving independence from Britain. And here's a Britisher, uh, Ben Stokes, saying, uh, this is a great stadium and uh, some nice local music going on. Well, it's more than local music, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? An Englishman not recognising the music. But why would he? You know, like, um, if uh, Ben St yeah, well, not Ben Stokes, he probably knows Lord St Matilda. Uh, you know, an important song here, by way of comparison, in Australia. Ah, you will see this thing here, right in front of you. Here you go, right in front of that truck, which is probably obscuring the view. You may catch a sight of the MCG light towers. Yeah. All right then, now, um, oh, we're going into a tunnel now. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, imagine Virat Kohli, you know, on his, in his, when he first came to Australia, was training at the MCG. And he said, oh, this is what, and we had Walsing Matilda playing. Um, and he might say something like in a tweet, if tweets were around then, I can't remember when he started, this is when tweets started. Um, wonderful cricket ground this, the MCG, and they've got some nice local music on. We might say, local music, that's waltzing Matilda, my friend. <laughs> it's more than just local music, that's a very important song for us, you know. And, um, and, and so it was with Ben Stokes that, um, he made the same sort of gaffe, if you like, and uh, dismissed a very important song, much more important than Walter and Matilda, uh, Indian nationalistic song, as local music. You know. And then the tweets, he got flooded with tweets, I saw them, and uh, saying, that's not just local music, my friend, that is music that should be ringing in your ears since we achieved independence, you know. Local music, you know. Um, now some of those tweets would have been thinking uh, what a philistine Ben Stokes is, or wake up Ben Stokes. Look, a lot of them were, listen, we love you Ben Stokes. You know that. Uh, but that's not just any ordinary local music. Um, and Ben Stokes, look, my bet is he didn't reply to any of the tweets because you shouldn't. Because he didn't say anything wrong. But this is the funny thing about Twitter, is you can say something, and I suppose this was the point I was going to make at the end of the last episode. You can say something on Twitter, and if, if people take that at face value, exactly what you said, and they insist that that defines you, what you have said, I don't think that's very right, you know, because Ben Stokes wasn't um, being disrespectful or anything like that. Not that, not that all of the 
tweets would have been claiming that he was being disrespectful, but you know, there was a tone to a lot of the tweets. Um, that's our, you know, Matari Vadahem or whatever it was. Um, that's a very important song. That's not a local, local song, local music. Come on, you know, like, don't you know? Well, how would he, you know what I mean? It's a bit like Virat Kohli having to know what Walter Matilda um, is. You know, when he first came to the MCG and he actually did write a tweet and said, great cricket ground this, um, shh, you know, and interesting local music. Well, he never did make that tweet, I'm sure, but, you know, just imagine he did. Now, um, so Ben Stokes, yeah, just gave me this thought about um, social media. I think social media's got many, many faults in its design. Not in what people are saying and everything, but the very design of social media is such that someone can say something and to a, in, in the heads of a lot of people, what they're saying uh, on Twitter defines them. You know, so for some people, um, some people would have said Ben Stokes should have done his homework before willy-nilly he went off, you know, um, saying something that was insensitive to Indians. You know, that you could run that line. Or you could just be cool and say, oh, thanks for the compliment, Ben. Yeah, this is a great stadium. Thanks. I hope, I'm glad you're loving it. Um, and that music isn't just any ordinary local music, by the way. It's a very, <laughs> it's a little bit ironic that you thought it was, but but um, but you're not to know that. And uh, um, and we love you, Ben Stokes. You know, you can take that approach too. But to a very large extent, I think Twitter tends to define people by what they're saying, taken literally. When in many cases, I'm sure it would be better to define people on what they meant, what their intent was, you know, um, and, and uh, in the case of Ben Stokes, I think what he meant was just to simply pay a compliment, and um, and I think he was loving India at that moment in time. All right, no disrespect at all, you know. Uh, look, a lot of people do have this attitude, I had this person say this to me too, that even if you do make a mistake on Twitter, you are still accountable for your insensitivity and disrespect. And the, and the, uh, the example that person gave me, because I ran that line, I say, hey, you know, because um, I, I forget what it was. Uh, uh, I, I do remember what it was. It was uh, an incidence of, I don't want to talk about racism or anything, but blackface. Um, someone, a, a famous basketballer here from the Opals, uh, Kunek, her name was, and still is. Um, she went to a party, and she's only a young lady, and um, she was uh, dressing up as Kanye West, and, um, and she put brown makeup on, you know, and she got smashed for that. And she was just, oh, really obviously in her case, she's only a young lady, a basketballer. She probably only cares about basketball. She'd never heard of blackface before, and a lot of people uh, said it's not good enough that you haven't heard of it before. You know, you should have checked that there wasn't anything wrong with painting your face before you painted your face. You should have done your homework, you know, due diligence. And I thought, oh, come on. How would you know to know to check? You know, that's what, I, I came out defending her. I wouldn't come out defending everybody who paints their face brown because a lot of people do know about it. You know, that's an offence in the United States especially, and everywhere in the world now. We're all educated now, because we've got the internet now, and all that sort of stuff, you know. Um, but I felt sorry for that girl, because she she put out a very pain, you know, like it was painful to watch. She was distressed. You could tell. She said, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't know. You know, I, was, I actually thought, um, I was just trying to be Kanye West. I, I've never heard of this blackface. You should have known. And uh, the person who was talking to me said it's a, it's a bit like um, if you go into the kitchen, this person said to me, you know, and you, you're a kid, you know, you're, you're 15, let's say. And you go into the kitchen and you see the dishwasher over there and you know there could be dirty dishes in there. 
but you're not quite sure. But you want to go to a party. So what you do is you don't open the dishwasher just in case there's something bad in there. She said, it's like that. You know, you really should check the dishwasher. Do you do your due diligence? But to that, you know, my thought was in the Alice, Alice wasn't it? Alice Kunek situation, I was thinking, yeah, but she didn't even know there was a dishwasher in the kitchen. It was inside a cupboard, you know, and she was just, um, and, and her family was on holiday and no one even told her the joint had a dishwasher. And you're expecting her to check the dishwasher? Why didn't you check the dishwasher? And to which she could have said, you know, I didn't even know there was a dishwasher. Otherwise I would have, you know. You know, it was a case of that, you know, with Alice Kadek. She didn't even, not only did she know that there was nothing insulting about blackface, um, she did, clearly didn't even know that there could be anything wrong with it. She didn't imagine there could be anything wrong with it. You know? Now, I'm coming out as an apologist for Alice Kunek there, the poor, the poor, um, and, and this is not to say that, um, and then there was another basketballer who um, suffered and genuinely suffered as a result of Alice Kunek doing that blackface. And that was Elizabeth Cambridge, who I think is wonderful too. And, um, and she genuinely suffered, you know, by seeing her teammate in blackface. Um, so it was just a bad luck thing, you know, because I was on Elizabeth Cambridge's face. Uh, um, uh, uh, her, her side um, as well, but I was on Alice Kunek's side as well. I don't think either of them did anything wrong, but they, they ended up locked in a battle between the two of them anyway. Well, Elizabeth Cambridge was not happy with Alice Kunek. Um, Alice Kunek kind of tried to say sorry, but uh, apology was not accepted, you know. Look, it just these things get out of hand, and that brings me back to Twitter. Um, I think the very design of something like Twitter is such that you can be defined by what you say and not what you meant. And in ordinary, you know, when, when we go out and meet people at coffee shops, if you make a faux pas like that, the expression on your face and all that sort of stuff, the other person, like if, if it had have been Elizabeth Cambridge and um, Alice Kunek together at a party, you know, they could have had it out right there and it probably would have gone off better, you know, rather than having a Twitter war. And I think it's, you know, the, the Ben Stokes example, look, is much, much more minor, but it's illustrative, I think, um, because um, Ben Stokes was just paying a compliment, and um, he did get a barrage of uh, lots and lots and lots of, of Indian people, uh, Indians, um, saying, that's no ordinary local song, that's a very important song in our heritage, and it was all to do with throwing you English out, and it kind of, the tweet was meant to be feel good, and it, it ended up dragging up some of that stuff, which is a shame. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, Twitter and all that stuff. Do you know what? There, there's an opportunity for things to be taken the wrong way too much when it comes to social media. And I think that's a fault in the platform. Yeah. In ordinary, um, when you're meeting people in ordinary circumstances, of course, things can be taken the wrong way and all that sort of stuff. With, but you're only meeting five or 10 people at a time, maybe 20 or 30 at a party, you know, and you could make a big faux pas there and all that sort of stuff. But with Twitter, it's like you're at a party all the time with millions of people at the party all at once and they and it's like the the whole let's say a huge room where everyone's talking and suddenly everyone hushes and then you're still talking and you say something that's a faux pas what you've got there is the opportunity no matter what you say there's too much opportunity i think for it to be taken the wrong way and i think uh, the, the, the design of Twitter and all these things is such that um, um, it's almost certain that it will be taken the wrong way because even if um, let's say you have Ben Stokes had let's say he had five thousand comments now 
against his faux pas, as you might call it. Uh, I don't think it was a faux pas. Um, let's say he had 5,000 comments against, against that. Um, now, immediately you just ignore the 3,500 that completely understood where he was coming from and thought, you're a good bloke, Ben, thanks for the compliment with respect to our stadium. What you're doing, you, almost inevitably, inevitably, you're concentrating on the 1,500 who, um, in the end, who have got their knickers on in a knot about Ben Stokes uh, not being aware that this is more than just some local music for his amusement. This is a very important national song, you know. And um, and I think I, th I think that's the problem with Twitter. No matter what you say, there's it's there's there's a there's rather a guarantee that's going to be taken in the wrong way by enough people for you to not be able to ignore that group of people. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 a and um, I think uh, in in ordinary discourse. Normally, everyone sort of says, ah, we know what you meant, you know. But on Twitter, when, especially if you're famous, you've got millions of people watching you and X number of people, you know, rather than there being a chance that you'll be misinterpreted and all that sort of stuff, it becomes a guarantee that you'll be misinterpreted through sheer weight of numbers. And I think the platform, I think... The idea of social media is faulty for that reason and for many other reasons too. And that'll do.